Sports. And it is the biggest show on the radio. Mason and Ireland is on for your Tuesday afternoon. If you want me to, I will be the B. Here we go. Lakers are back on the court tonight as Mason spring break continues. Lakers Warriors, three games left in the final week of the season. And yes, today's Tuesday. Usually a live imaging Tuesday. But of course, Ireland's comments on Friday. But as, a, as, as you've moments. noticed with me, I, I normally always acquiesce. You didn't want to take calls. I said, okay. You don't want guests. I said, okay. Right. Uh, no. I didn't want Morales on the show. Still don't. So you, you, <laughs> you, fold, you fold faster to Greg than Mason does to you. Yeah, Mason right. does fold fast to you. <laughs> now, ownership likes me, but if Johnny I turned on me, I thought we had a friendship. I thought we made peace Hell many no. summers ago at the TRB in Manhattan Beach. Tin Roof Bistro, by the way. Did Ireland keep me off the air today? Dot, dot, dot. Let's get to it. A Tuesday afternoon celebrating their 20th year at ESPN Los Angeles. The biggest show on the radio. I am sticking up for John, my friend, my partner. He should be the A. Mason and Ireland, your Tuesday afternoon right now. With me now. Ah! Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey, we are loaded today. This is going to be a really fun show. DeMarco Fars here filling in for Mace. What's happening? The Laker game tonight for my money, is the most important game of the year so far. Wow. And because of that, we have both radio analysts for the Lakers, Michael Thompson in English, Pepe Montilla in Spanish, and we are loaded. Pepe, you agree with me? Most important game of the year tonight. Totally. It shouldn't be, but it is the most important <laughs> game. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be because they lost some games that they should have won. Yeah. So, Michael, who are you rooting for in this game? Because, obviously, Clay is kind of had a renaissance. He's playing really well. They've won six out of seven. He may not be there next year if the Warriors peter out in the playoffs. This would probably get him out of the ten. On the other hand, I know you bleed purple yeah. and gold. Who are you rooting for? Well, I always root for Clay to have a great game, to go for 40 efficiently, not take, you know, so I always root for that. Because if he goes for 40, then they'll play well and they'll be competitive. But right. if he doesn't uh, shoot the ball well, then the Lakers should dominate. Uh, you don't want to be rooting against your son. That's not a good answer. Why not? That's not a good answer. That's a, that's a funny dominate. baloney answer. <laughs> Either you are so. with one team or with the other. Come on. You think I'm riding the fence? Yeah, no, okay. a little bit. What you, what your, <laughs> no, your answer to me has always been on and off the air. Yeah. I hope Clay goes for 40 and the Lakers win by sure. one. That's right. what I was suspecting. Everybody yeah. wins. Well, that's yeah. what I just said, didn't I? Everybody well, wins. Le- uh, yeah. LeBron's playing, right? We oh, think yeah. so. Yeah, what do play. you mean you think so? Well, it's the most important game of the year. Yeah, but he will. Are you guys being like, ga- is it gamesmanship? He's going to play, right? There's no way he, he misses he, this game. The other day he had the flu. He was actually in the building and he went home. Because he, they didn't want him to get the other players. You got to play with your LeBron. So my yeah. guess is he's over that, Michael. Yeah. He's had 48 hours right. since then. I'm more worried about AD. We've gotten no update. They're both listed officially as questionable. We've gotten no update on AD's eye. But here's a question for the three of you. Um, I asked it yesterday, but none of you guys were here. You guys all know I'm friends with James Worthy. Worthy's fresh, uh, rookie year with the Lakers. He kept getting poked in the eye. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar grabbed him and said, man, you've got to wear these goggles that I'm wearing because you're you're now getting hesitant when you go to the hoop. Yeah, yeah. And as long as you think you're going to get poked in, he goes, once you put these on, it's like a shield of armor. And Worthy goes, I've never worn them, didn't wear them in high school, didn't wear them in North Carolina. And Kareem talked him into trying the goggles. And Worthy said it took him two weeks to get used to him. And once he was used to him, he never had an eye issue for the rest of the year. Michael, shouldn't AD go to the Worthy Kareem goggles? I mean, shouldn't someone be calling Gary Vitti and asking him if he's got a pair in his garage somewhere? Yeah, I don't think the only person who kind of wears goggles is Sterling. What's his name? Uh, Scoot Henderson up in Portland. Yeah. The guy in De- uh, There's in- one guy in Houston, too, that's a, a backup center. Houston or is Indiana- Indianapolis? Is it Indianapolis? Uh, they may be Smith? Gla- Smith. Yeah, they yeah. may be glasses, though. Jalen Smith. Yeah. Is they may be glasses or something. I don't know if they're goggles. But would you, if you were Rob Palenka or Darvin Ham, would you ask AD to wear goggles? You have to suggest, yeah. Yeah, you could suggest it to him, but I don't think he'll do it. Why not? Have you Why? ever been poked Why? in the eye? Because guys don't think it looks yeah. cool. Uh, who, but hey, have you ever been poked in the eye before? Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely hurts. But, but you, you never, not go you to the never, goggles? No. You never wore, did you no. wear them for one game? Not, not even for one game. Why? Why Why not? Badge of honor, tough guy well, stuff? You, 
Do you think you, think you were cool. going to look uh, uglier than what you are now? Look at this, <laughs> Dang, Pepe. Look at this <laughs> face, Pepe. Would I want to cover up this face, the second best looking man that ever played look in the NBA next to, next to Rick Fox? Wow. Come on. Yeah. Well, well let me right. tell There's you. There's a lot of truth in that, though. Yeah. Let yeah. me tell you, John. <laughs> today is a re an honor for me to be here Why? with a great person like Super Bowl champion DeMarco Pepe. Farr. Yeah. Yeah. How's the hip, man? Are you okay? You almost broke my I almost, hip. I almost hurt oh, him. You gave him a hug and no, you, yeah. no, no. He asked me about the drop hip, swivel hip yeah. tackle and thing, and you were trying to show it to and him. And I said it's easier for me to show you than than talk to you and about it. You didn't it. know he just had a hip. I did not know. I gave him a little pull. And I, I'm like, oh god, I, yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> you know that yeah. Yeah. my my guy Bill McDonald had a heart issue. Yeah. And we were up. We we're down in uh, Phoenix, and our buddy Tim Kempton, who played in the league when Michael played. Um, came up behind him and gave him a giant bear hug like two weeks after and billy's like no 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 you can't and tim thought he was playing and went tighter oh boy and i ran into him i go timmy just had heart surgery oh my god and and tim goes i feel terrible i felt yeah. horrible for right. pepe i didn't yeah, know about the hips know. i'm sorry no, man I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Okay, I'm so okay. let me let me set up the stakes tonight like yeah. as soon as i walked in today demarco looked at me and he goes Biggest game of the year? Big time. Totally. Yeah. But I would have those goggles in his locker. I would definitely Suggested. put those things in his locker. Michael, you can't yeah. make him do it, right? No, you can't you've got to strongly persuade. Yeah. Yeah, right. it. Um, all right, so if the Lakers win tonight, they guarantee themselves at least the ninth seed, but could move to eighth or even seventh, depending wow. on what happens with New Orleans. If they lose, if the Lakers lose, the Warriors control the ninth spot. All they would have to do is win, win a couple of games and stay because whoever wins tonight also, guys, gets the tiebreaker. Um, because right now it's Golden State two, Lakers one. And so if you win tonight two two, it goes to conference record. We'd have to look at that. But if Golden State wins tonight, they not only get the tiebreaker. They're not only a half game behind the Lakers, but, Michael, their next game is in Portland, yeah. a team that's not even no. trying to win. Exactly. So they'd be tied with the Lakers, and I think the Lakers dropped to 10th. Con conference record, by the way, if the Lakers win, would be 26-24, and 24, and the Warriors would be 23-26. and 26. So, so if the Lakers win, win, they would get the tiebreaker. They tie would breaker. get the tiebreaker off of conference record. Um, all right, so I've got an idea. If he goes out there and plays without goggles and gets hurt again, oh, my God. Well, then, it's on, then it's on him. Because if he goes out, that's it. You know what I mean? If he that's goes what happened out, that, the other night. That you can't have that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would I would almost force him to wear those things. But you can't – I don't know, Michael. You can't make a guy yeah, wear them, right? You can't make them. You can strongly suggest that you can't I've seen them. quarterbacks with bad left knees. And they make them wear a you brace. You have to wear a brace. They make them wear them. You make – yeah, because if you go out, we're done. It's not just about you. It's about us. Yeah. Um, all right, that's so the way it should be. With a game of this importance – Greg, tell me if this is mean-spirited of me, unfair, probably reflects probably. poorly on me. Probably. I think we should try and get Draymond ejected. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. No, you honestly, you should. Wow. He's so easy to flip. Right. So here's... How do you do it? How would you suggest it? Yeah, I was going to ask that. Face, how do you, how do you get Draymond him. thrown out? You, Talk send, at him. you send somebody on our team who we really don't care if he plays a ton of minutes. Castleton. Maxwell Burkow Lewis. Burkowski. And he picks, <laughs> he picks a fight with Draymond. A wow. fight or just get some two techs? Either way it works, right? Mm -hmm. Just so what Mac. makes this interesting like is, in the Michael, I don't even know if you've days. heard this. Um, Clay, your son, was a guest on Draymond's podcast. And the last time Draymond got ejected, Draymond has more ejections than anybody in the NBA. He's second only all time to Rasheed Wallace. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so when he got thrown out last time, Michael, he got thrown out like three minutes into the yeah, game, yeah, right? In Orlando. Made Steph cry. And, yeah, Steph and Clay yeah. were visibly mad at him. So Draymond, to his credit, had Clay on his podcast and asked him point blank, tell me honestly, how do you really feel when I get ejected? Here's what it sounded like. Very afraid of the air. Let me be brutally honest with you. When I get ejected or something of that nature or suspended, what do you feel? How well, do you feel? It's going to crush me, but nah. I, I need to hear it. When you're not out there, it's like a piece of us is gone. We can never be ourselves and have the freedom we do on the court without you. 
So I know the other team is very happy you're not out there. They can, they relax a little bit. They they let their hair down because our muscles gone, our enforcer, the guy, the heartbeat of our team is not out there. And we've been through so many battles, reached the mountaintop, been down the mountain, had to climb back up. And now we have another real shot at this. So at the end of the day, we just need you. And then that, that like disappointment and that feeling of shaking your head that just comes from like, dang, man, we can't do this without you. And we're not the warriors without money green. That's just a fact. All right, first of all, Michael, that's a great answer. Yeah. Um, Can we strategically poke Draymond to the point where he'll do something stupid? Well, he's definitely going to get a tech tonight because it's going to be a very intense playoff atmosphere-like game. So he's definitely going to get a tech. Now, he's going to have to control himself not to pick up a second one, Pepe. If he picks up that first one, then it might be easy to bait him into getting the second one. Is that... Foul that is, play on my part to even suggest cheap. this. <laughs> that yeah, that's cheap. what I was, that's that what I was gonna cheap. say. Knowing that no, he has not. an anger management problem, yeah. can I try and exploit it? Of course, you should. Am I being smart? It's their problem. Or am I being stupid? Yeah, it's their problem. They got to keep their guy in check. But I mean, that's that's a horrible way to win. In that's, my opinion, that's the way he used to be. Yeah, that's the way. Right? Well, in Michael's day, the ref would just yell at you to shut up and cuss at you. That's yeah, but, the but, but they had they had enforcers. That's what changed the uh, 2016 NBA Finals. Remember him and LeBron got into that that tiff. Yeah. And he sort of elbowed LeBron as he was trying to get up in between LeBron's legs. And LeBron brought it up in a post uh, game post game yeah. co- press conference. Mm-hmm. And LeBron said, "You know that's that should be a suspendable offense." Because the NBA wasn't thinking about it. The NBA went back, reviewed it. Next thing you know, Jeremiah suspended for Game Five. Yeah, I wouldn't have suspended him. No, not for that. I wouldn't. I, t- this is my position on this stuff, Demarco. You have to do something that would felonious, that would be a felony, in order for me to suspend you. Take a swipe at a I guy's might, head. Right? I might. Yeah fine you a yeah. ridiculous amount of money but why take the the main players in the stage off the stage well, i mean if, come if on he, if he keeps doing it over and over and over again he's, he's greg you yeah. would continue to suspend these take guys? him away from demarco i would draymond specifically yeah he is a danger to people on the court when he's like that he goes red he sees nothing but red and goes and he chokes people and hits them in the nuts. He does all these things that are not a part of the game. He should be kicked out of the game when he does things like that. I, I Absolutely. Hate, I hate to agree with the commissioner, but but he's he's right. With yeah. Mao, the manager of audio operations. Yes, the Mao. Wow. The Mao. <laughs> yeah, the Mao. All right. But so he's a danger when he does he those is. things. He I, is. By the way, I'm kind of I'm kind of half kidding. I don't think I like Draymond, and I don't think he's getting thrown out. I think no, it's too important. That's of a, a heck game. of a quote by Clay, though. That's not yeah. what I was expecting. What would you expect? I, I, I hate when you get thrown out. I think you're. it's dumb when you're you get thrown out. You're killing us, man. You're killing us. But what he said about, hey, look, we've been through I battles. I actually think yeah. it was. That was I, a I really good answer. I think the way Go Clay ahead. came at him is actually going to make Draymond more conscientious. That, that's what I said. That's because, a heck of a quote. Yeah. Because and, and I've heard Clay say this about you, Michael. You, It didn't kill him when you got mad at him and your other kids. But when you were disappointed in him is what killed him. It's like when you and Julie were disappointed, that that crushed him. And so what Clay just did was, man, it's just disappointing. You, We need you. And you know we need you. And and by the way, this is a speech I would give to Anthony Davis, saying, look, man, I, I know you don't want to wear these goggles. I know you think they look goofy. I know you think it might affect the way you play. But three times this year you've had to leave a game because you got poked in the eye, and twice you didn't come back. If I'm playing against him, I'm going to take a shot at him. Right. No, you can't do that. You get thrown out. No, right. I, but no, I'm no, going to try. Like very, you right. played in the league for a long time. It'd be very easy to poke a guy in the eye and then say, yeah. whoops, sorry. Or at least put my hand there just to mess with him so a little bit. I yeah, hope, Draymond's going to do it. I hope somebody, <laughs> whether it be somebody at Clutch, maybe LeBron, maybe it's Darvin, maybe it's Rob, geez, maybe even Jeannie, I, I, I think if you come at – AD like Clay went at Draymond saying, "Look, man, we love you. Yeah, we can't win without you." Michael, I thought you big man had this little fraternity. Go talk to the guy. Yeah, Michael, tell you him think what's he would Listen to you. You're a big. Come on. If these, if these guys were willing to listen, a lot of them would listen to Kareem about shooting a sky hook, but they don't want to do it. Yeah, isn't that the most amazing thing ever, Demarco? That no one's tried to copy the sky hook. Okay, that's mo- kind of dumb. The most that is yeah. really shot. you're the not going to learn that. The yeah. greatest weapon in the history of the NBA, mm-hmm. and no, no one, one. Wow. And I, I asked Kareem about it once, and I said, "Why?" He goes. They don't think it looks cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think it looks cool. Yeah, I thought so too. It's graceful. I think it's a really great advantage. Oh, yeah. and scoring. They don't take advantage yeah. of that. Defend you. you imagine if, scoring yeah, is cool. Can, because, can you imagine if, if Wemby had a hook oh, shot? Oh my gosh. Oh, like, game over. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, 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 we can big, all go home. you're big and then you're <laughs> extra big. Right.
Yeah, it's it's crazy. All right, coming up next, I've been waiting. I've been hanging on to a couple of football things until I get a chance to work with DeMarco. Michael and Pepe love NFL football, too. So yes. we'll get into a couple of football things coming up next. But I want to talk to you guys for a second about Toyota and the Southern California Toyota dealers. For as long as I've been lucky enough to have these jobs, and really for as long as I can remember, Toyota and the Lakers have been together 48 years of Toyota being associated with the Lakers. Why? Because year after year, Toyota delivers quality, reliability, and simply the best vehicles on the road. Right now, brand new inventory waiting for you. Choose from an amazing selection of cars, trucks, crossovers, SUVs, EVs. Great deals waiting for you now. All you got to do is see your Southern California Toyota dealers or visit toyota.com. Toyota, we make it easy. Gang's all here. DeMarco and Fermace. Michael's here. Pepe's here. Bergman's here. Laura's here. Brian's here. All hands on deck for the biggest Laker game of the year. Tonight, 7 o'clock. You'll hear it here, live on ESPN LA.
And it is Mason in Ireland on 710 ESPN, the OGs of LA Sports Radio. We're here each weekday, 1 to 4 p.m. for your afternoon. Sandwiched between Travis and Sliwa and Sonato and Cap. Mason in Ireland continues now. All right, full house today. Mason in Ireland, DeMarco Farr in for Mace. Michael Thompson's here. Pepe Montilla's here. Bergman's here. Laura's here. Brian's here. All hands on deck for what we're calling the biggest Laker game of the year. Wow. Lakers, Warriors, tonight, 7 o'clock. We all think the loser tonight is the 10. Is the Bo Derrick. Which you don't want. Well, not that you don't want to be Bo Derrick, but you don't want to be 10. I'm surprised you know who that is, Bergman. What do you mean? Of course I know Way who Bo Derrick is. And 10. Laura, do you know who that is? What was the guy's name that was in? Um, Dudley Moore. Dudley Laura, Moore, do you know right. who Bo Derrick is? I heard the name. Brian. Beautiful. You? She's a woman actress, right? Yeah. She's a woman a actress? woman actress? Well, wow. I've heard the name, yeah. Oh. Did like. you ever hear of 10? You ever heard the movie 10 with Dudley Moore? No, I don't think so, no. What? Before his time. This, <laughs> classic. this Before is an actress that's too old for Pepe. Uh, that's true. <laughs> oh, now I got to Google, Google it. Brigida. <laughs> right. Now I got to Google it. Or too young, excuse me. Brian, you should see that movie. I'm sure you like it. It's, it's called a good 10? Movie. Yeah, called 10. 10. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, Dudley yeah. Moore is very funny. I'm going to Google this right now. You never saw, heard the movie and, with Laura? And by the way, Fernando Jimenez from Montebello just won a 30 for 30 in anniversary panel hey. tickets. Yes. So listen to Mason in Ireland. It's Donald Cap and Cap this week for your chance to win a four-pack of tickets to a night you will never forget. This Friday night at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood, the 30 for 30 15th anniversary panel. As part of the inaugural year of This Is Not a Fiction, the American Cinematheque is thrilled to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the incredibly successful sports documentary film series, 30 for 30. A night to remember happens this Friday night, and we've got your chance to be there all week on 710 ESPN. I would go to that if I was in town. I'm going to be, Michael and I are going to be, be in Memphis, but uh, I would love to go Eating to Eating barbecue. Uh, one of the things, either that <laughs> or Gus's fried chicken. Nice. Gus's fried chicken is literally stumbling distance for our Mar Hotel. Are really? we going there? Are we going there Thursday oh. night? We can. Would you rather go there or would you rather go to Rendezvous? Oh, Gus's anytime. What's Rendezvous? Barbecue. Barbecue. But I'll go to Gus's with you yeah. okay. if you want to nice. go. Nice. All right, so DeMarco's here. For people that don't yeah, know, yeah. DeMarco won a Super Bowl with the Rams, played in the NFL, played at the University of Washington. Played drums in the parade and can't remember it. There you go. Yep. <laughs> um, so whenever I get really good football stuff, I tend to file it away and wait until I get to work with yeah. DeMarco, which is the case today. So here's the first thing I'm going to throw at you. Michael, you'll love this idea. Remember, and a lot of people don't know this yet, but they have radically altered the kickoff. Yeah. Oh, starting yeah. this season. DeMarco, how would I how would how should we explain it? It's gonna be less running full speed down the field and more of trying to pop it high up in the air and control it, right? They're trying to yeah. limit injuries. They're trying to limit the high speed collisions from distance, because that's what gives concussions. I mean, kickoff used to be the worst thing on the planet. They would right. they would keep guys on the team, when extra you fullbacks. Played, did you ever have to be on kickoff? Duty? Oh my god. Do you remember John Jerkovic? Sure. Remember that name? Yeah. Okay, so he was the wedge in Green Bay. Was he a jerk? <laughs> was he a jerk? Uh, no, but they called him Yerk. Yerk, Yerk not Jerk. Yeah, yeah. It's like Jokic. So he yeah. was the wedge when they can actually do a wedge. So the four biggest guys on the football team, they would join hands and basically quadruple team a guy coming and down. It was your job to go tackle him. Well, they told me the week of, hey, Demarco, you're going to be the wedge buster this week, which means I got to go nose to nose with this guy. What's my job? Blow him up. So that's old kickoff. So. Yeah, you can the knock new people kickoff out. now is you don't want to kick it into the end zone because then they would get the ball back on the thirty-five. Right, you're trying to encourage returns. Right, oh, so yeah. You, so you there will, is a return zone. You're going yes. to pop it, Michael. They're going to try and so pop it up. Back is now thirty-five. Right, correct. Right. And so what they're going to try and do is pop the ball up right. to land in between the twenty and the goal line, mm -hmm. and then you can pin them back in their own zone. And you you have to start from a certain position, so they're right. limiting how far you're running, how fast you can get down there. So basically, you're going to be tying up with guys. Uh, from it's about gonna, 15 yards out instead of 40. You okay. know what I mean? Right. So yeah. keep that in mind. That's the critical part of this discussion, that that instead of running 35, 40 yards full speed, you're not going to run about 15 yards, and it's more of a wrestling match. Yes, it's, and you're going to have uh, somebody in front of you that is going to stop you, not like before. Yeah, right, so Pepe, with that in mind, you took me right where I want to go. Yeah. The Dallas Cowboys have maybe the best defensive player in the NFL, Micah Parsons. He is... DeMarco, he's kind of a hybrid. He's technically a linebacker, but he also they line him up as a down lineman sometimes, just right? Just go back to everything you said and just remove the maybe. He is that guy. Okay, yeah. but but he, would you describe him more as a defensive lineman or a linebacker? He can play whatever. Okay. Um, he is. He, he can line up an end. Kind of like what Lawrence Taylor used to do, Middle linebacker. Right? Kind of like more like Junior Seau. Right. He can line up 
and anywhere and get you from there. Okay, so Micah Parsons has gone to John Fossil, who used to be the special teams coach for the Rams. John's a great guy. DeMarco, Excellent you know coach. him a little bit. Fantastic. Cowboys, Became the head coach. Yeah, the Cowboys offered him a bunch of money to come be the special teams coach for the Cowboys, so now he works in Dallas. So Fossil was doing an interview the other day, and he said, and I want you guys to think about this idea. Micah Parsons has come to him and said, I want to return kickoffs. I'm faster and stronger than anybody on our team. They won't be able to tackle me. Here's exactly what Fossil said. So he has lobbied me in the past to just be the, the primary kickoff returner. I'm like, Micah, that's, that's the question. You got to go a little you gotta go a little further up than me on that one. But um, would I love to see him back there? Absolutely. Because he would be fantastic. He would catch it, and he'd run wild, and he'd probably – get incredible yards, but that ain't going to happen. I'm, I'm aware of that. <laughs> All right, so, DeMarco, why is it not going to happen? He's too valuable. He's too valuable. On but is it still dangerous to return kickoffs Absolutely. under these new rules? It's dangerous to get tackled, period. I mean, look, he says he can run over just about anybody. That is true, so to speak. But what happens if you get caught in traffic and you're being held up and somebody comes in and hits you in the hip or the knee or the ankle, you roll something? If he tries, I need you on third down, not course, on kick return. Of course. If he tries to jump... Some for somebody that is tackling him, yeah. he's gonna get hurt. But Michael, if but Michael Parsons came to you and you were the head coach of the Cowboys, or you're Jerry Jones, going to the Cowboys, and, and he says, "Look, they won't be able to tackle me. I'm faster mm -hmm. than anyone covering me. Let me return kicks." See, what do you say? Get the, out of the room. No. <laughs> Demarco, I'm surprised at you. Why? That is the softening of the NFL. No. You ever heard of a guy named Oh, what was his name? It escapes me right now. Oh, I remember. Deion Sanders. Of course. The greatest defensive back ever. Did he's he, a corner. Did he? Defensive back, whatever. Didn't he used to return punts? How dangerous and was that? Kickoffs. Most corners return punts. They're small guys. But why would you yeah. risk Dion, who's the best defensive by, man in the world? He did it. He's a return Gale man. Gale Sayers yeah. returned yeah. kicks. And that's, and that's Reggie punt Bush returns. Reggie Bush returned kicks. Yeah, um, that's punt returns he's talking about with Dion. Kick returns are different. Yeah, but Gale Sayers returned kickoffs. Yeah, true. Punt that's returns. a running back. This is what you do. And this punt is, returns, you're running full speed. Oh, so what you're saying is he's not used to getting hit. Yeah. And this might be weird for him. Guys that know how to skill position, guys, they're different. This is Micah Parsons. This is... Michael, do you hear yeah. the... the, the, the the key word that he said is he's too valuable. Well, wasn't Dion valuable to the to the Falcons? Yeah, I'm it's with Michael on this. Kind of and the 49ers? I, I I don't I would let him try it. I, is Are you out risk? of your mind? The injury risk is would, that big. Yes. So oh my D, God. So yes. was Dion crazy to he's return not, punts? He's not a skill position guy. He's a he's a linebacker. He's a pass rusher. So you he's, wouldn't let Dion return punts? He's a skill guy. It's a What's difference? the difference? So Dion, Dion, hardly, Dion hardly Dion tackled. He's saying that Michael Parsons isn't used to this. No, I mean he's going to get hurt. He said I, it twice. You yeah. don't understand. Also, it was 30 years ago, you guys, all the people are talking. Gail Sears was 40 Wait, Greg, years ago. Wait, you wouldn't let Michael Parsons return No, absolutely not. He's too important to the defense. You, you have guys specifically well, for this. I wouldn't you draft you. people for this yes. specific role. I wouldn't let Saquon Barkley return Absolutely kick. not. Are you out of your Wait, mind? Too so important. what you just said. He's a running back. I, but it doesn't matter. He's too valuable to what yes. we so do. Bergman, you wouldn't let Dion return punts. No, now in today's game? No, absolutely not. Well, back then it was more, it was rougher. With Dion, you could hit guys harder. No, I would, let, I would let Dion return punts. What's that's, the difference? That's what he does. This yeah. is not what Micah Parsons does. But he said he can do it. Of course they're going to say he can do it. Micah's crazy. He's nuts. Stop coaching scared. There's no <laughs> way. What Absolutely happens not. What happens when he gets hit in the head, he gets a concussion, or he gets injured, and then now you lose Micah Parsons for the season or, or for three can, games? Then you can blame Michael. <laughs> 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 they're they're too making important. Any sense. Yes, I am. By no, his, you're not by making your coaching, any sense uh, as usual. By your coaching uh, fears, then they should stop the brotherly No, I'm not scared. stop the brotherly shove with Jalen Hurts. Nothing wrong with that. I get hurt. I have no problem with the brotherly shove. Stop well, him. That's, that's dangerous. No, man. no, I, but stop him. That's different. That's a different deal. But yeah, and there's, there's no running. No way. There's no running not. start with the with the brother. No, it's not no dangerous. Way. Are you oh, crazy? Shove not All dangerous. Right. So, well, I got another football thing that we'll get to later. But that's interesting. Demar Demarco's a no. Pepe's a no. You and I are a yes. yes. Yeah. I, by the way. DeMarco and Pepe are going to win the yard because Jerry Jones and uh, Mike McCarthy aren't going to let him no go. No way in Listen. heck. No way. <laughs> All right. Uh, coming up next, we'll spin the wheel of questions. We'll get Laura in here. She's got one for us. In the meantime, if you lift heavy equipment, or you deliver heavy boxes, if you work in an office all day and sit in a chair, get up and your back hurts, try iSpot Active. If you play tennis, soccer, pickleball, golf, basketball, you're a runner, you have sore knees, shins, try wearable cryotherapy. iSpot Active makes stylish, form-fitted compression wear with pockets that fit flexible ice-cold gel packs. They call them flex pods because they're rubbery and fit around your joints. Everybody I've turned on to this loves it, uses it daily. Great tool. 
to keep you doing what you're doing pain-free. So go to iSpotActive.com, get yours today, and for this week only, they're having a flash sale. Flash 710 gets you 25% off. If you go to the website, you'll see James Worthy, one of the owners. Uh, he uses this stuff every day. I use it every day. Uh, get yours before they run out. Flash 710 gets you 25% off, and they have free shipping, 30-day money-back guarantee. You can't lose. iSpot Active, iSpotActive.com. Wheel of Questions next, ESPN LA. Hey, it's Chris. For. What is this? It's time for Wheel of Questions. Producer Brian Cohen, are you ready with that wheel? Hit it, Jack. Hmm. All right, guys. This wheel of question actually comes straight from Alex, our security guard. Uh -oh. Love he, Alex. He, hi, Alex. Yeah, hi, Alex. He hey, recently Alex. had a birthday party, and, the and one of his cousins came over and brought a really nice gift. The same cousin... Just had a birthday, also had a party, but Alex was not able to get him a gift. And the cousin was upset, and he asked, and he wanted you guys' opinion, are you obligated to buy someone a gift, or isn't 
happy birthday just enough. Uh, so the guy had a birthday party, and Alex showed up without a gift. Yep, but he had one prior, like a week prior. Alex had one a week prior, and he showed up with a gift. Yeah, I would yeah. bring something. I think that showing up empty-handed is a little risky. Although, Michael, if they're having a party, a lot of times they'll say no gifts. Yeah. Um, like when I went to your house for that party you mm-hmm. threw for Amanda, I brought you a bottle of wine. Yeah, you I, know? I told you not to. Uh, right. Bergman didn't show up. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think? I couldn't. I would have I would have brought something. You Michael should bring no. something. Yeah, you should not bring a, something. Not Never show up in the hand. Not the host say don't But did the host anything. say no gifts, Laura? Oh, no. The, the cousin was mad. Like, okay, clearly so upset. Brian, what do you think? Uh, for a birthday party, yeah, you got to bring something. Especially if he gave you something yeah. a couple weeks ago or whatever the deal is. Yeah, Greg, that part of the back. story kind of makes this a no-brainer. Yeah, doesn't? Alex, man, I'm sorry. Like, that's a bad move. <laughs> it's, you have to reciprocate. He got you a gift. You get them a gift. And you're well, going to a birthday I, I party? Applaud, I applaud the guy calling him out. Should, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, should. Yeah. Yeah. It's your cousin. Pepe, you be think? honest. Um, you, regardless, um, you should bring something when you're invited to a house. Uh, I agree. Pepe bought me yeah. some tequila. Nice. Yeah. See, you took right. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's still in the bar. Right. It's still in the bar. Okay. It was a nice bottle, too. Um, yes, it was. All right. Sorry, Alex. We're all voting you off the island. Um, <laughs> the uh, Okay. So I wanted to get to this because Pepe asked me about it the other night uh, when I saw him at the game. Um, DeMarco, do you know who Red Panda is? I think so. Right, Maybe she on the is unicycle. an older Asian woman who rides a unicycle, and it's, it's the plate, trippy. The, the, the bowl girl? Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, I've Flips seen that. Flips them off her feet onto her head. Captivating. Love it. Right. Yeah. She's yeah. maybe the most exciting halftime show of all the ones that we look at. No, Slotic is. The chairman. The, well, Slotic, but nobody's nobody's trying to put Slotic in the Hall of Fame. That's true. So Pablo Torre from ESPN is trying to put Red Panda in the Hall of Fame as a contributor. Because wow. Because she's done over close to 1,000 shows. Halftime shows. And Pablo went out and got other Hall of Famers to kind of make the case for her. Here's what it sounded like. Hi, this is Mike Breen, and I'm proud to say I'm a charter member of the Red Panda Fan Club. Hi, this is Jackie McMullen, retired sports journalist and ardent Red Panda fan. I'm David Aldrich. Now, we all agree the world is not a great place right now, and there's very few people who bring us joy. One person who does, no matter your standing, no matter your station, no matter the team you root for, is Red Panda. I'm Jay Billis of ESPN, and I've spent my entire life in basketball arenas, literally all over the world. And there's only one person that can go into any basketball arena in the world and is instantly recognizable and gets a standing ovation every time, and that's Red Panda. What's up, everyone? This is Mark Spears from ESPN's Anscape. There have been some other acts and frisbees and people on stilts and stairs and stuff like that. Ain't nobody like Red Panda. All right, so she's got some Hall of Fame support. Big time. Um, Greg Bergman, if you had a Hall of Fame vote, yes or no, Red Panda Hall of Fame? 100% yes, I would. Laura Romo, yes or no, Red Panda in the Hall of Fame? A 1,000% yes. Brian Cohen, yes or no, Red Panda in the Hall of Fame? Michael Thompson, Red Panda Hall of Fame, what do you think? No. She dropped seven bowls last game. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God, <laughs> Michael. Never seen it. <laughs> yeah. now, it's a career, she's Michael. Long, long I would put her. Wow. She did. How many uh, buckets put, you made? I would put her in. Right, Pepe, I now, now, this, is what su- this is what surprised me, and What's I'm going to prepare you for all of it. Pepe, how do you feel about this? Why don't you ask uh, DeMarco? Well, DeMarco, do you, would you put her in the Hall of no. Fame? No. I'm with Michael. Mm-hmm. Okay, Pepe, how do you feel? I'm I'm with the smartest people yeah. here. Okay, uh, why Wait, should you think we Michael put Michael smarter than well, me? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, make Wait, your point. Wait. Why is she gonna be in the Hall of Fame? I mean, the Hall of Fame is for for even even this daughter bear should be in the Hall of Fame. Talking about me. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you should be in the Hall of Fame. A lot of other people should be in the Hall of but Fame. But none if of us can do put, what she does. No. I'm, okay. True. So let's put. Paul Abdul in the Hall of Fame because Paul Abdul was uh, and great Laker Abdul, girl. The, the is what she does important. basketball or just no, entertainment? No, but what happens is you can go in as a contributor. Yeah, like yeah. there are sports writers in there. All the people you heard from in that clip yeah, are yeah. in the Hall of Fame. But, but yeah, I got you. But Pablo does, doesn't put anybody that said no. That has your opinion. Yeah. So you're a hard no. 
What about no, the fact that she's dropping bowls like crazy now? Well, is she it's really? Like, oh, yeah, she no. dropped seven. I'm done. Let me, Michael, she dropped seven bowls the other day. Do you keep Tiger oh. out of the World Golf Hall of Fame because he can't putt anymore? <laughs> Good point. No, no it's yeah. a different no, story. No. Why? It's because, because the guy She used to not drop any bowls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic show. Yeah. yeah no. she, man, her, her last performance, Pepe, I felt I'm bad surprised. for her. You're normally very uh, positive, uplifting, support others. This I'm is supporting your... the Hall of Fame. Come on. Let's put the mascots. I'm with Pepe. Let's put the mascots. Let's yeah. put the mascot. The, the gorilla. The gorilla. Let's no. put the gorilla in the hole. By the way, why, why not the gorilla? Hey, Greg, no. do you know this? <laughs> that Rocky, the mascot in Denver, yeah. makes $500,000 a year. Wow. He's a Should great he mascot. Wow. He works hard, though. Should he yeah. be in the Hall of Fame, Laura, the mascot? No. No. Come on. Why not? No. If he's actually contributing to the game, then yeah. he should be in the Hall so of Fame. How does that as contribute a contributor. To the game? You put as a contributor. Red and you don't put the mask. Should you put Chuck, <laughs> the condor? No, 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 he, no, no way. <laughs> let me let me change the subject really quick, okay? Yeah. yeah what are um, you doing with the? What are those I, things I, you brought with you? I have uh, 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 my house. I was cleaning, and I have seriously about five thousand trading cards that I collected with my son. So okay. I was going through the throwing some to the trash. So I throw a couple and. And somebody that I'm gonna I'm not gonna say the name, okay? Say said, the name. No, you cannot throw this away. Why? Because they're Michael Thompson. I said, oh. throw them away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, you have? They look like they're in mint condition yeah, too. Look at yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Let me see that. You, is that you? Is that you? What's that one? This is Maury Wills. Whoa, one of my wow. favorite players, and he's signed. Look at oh, you. That's wow. signed by Maury? You can yeah. get some money for that. You want to yeah, throw it away? Pepe, you don't want to you don't you don't want want throw it do away. You? Keep no. it. I'll keep no, it. I'm and keep if it. not, I'll have them in my trash bin. Uh, Bring no, them over. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep. You this. were going to throw away the Maury Wills? Are you giving Michael, I, 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 the Michael I, Thompson cards, or do you want to keep them? I threw away sleeves. those. Now I'm going to keep them. Yeah. Yeah. If you get Michael to sign them, does that make the value go up or down? Yeah, like one penny. One penny. I'll take it. Um all right, coming up next, we'll uh, we'll do two o'clock call of the day, and Greg, what'd you say? Wabba Grill. Oh, and I would let me tell you about Wabba Grill. Don't miss Sedano and Cap four p.m. happy hour brought to you by Wabba Grill today on seven ten. Actually, they're going to do two hours today. Uh, they're going to run from three to five, three to five thirty, right, Greg? Yep. Wabba Grill wants to help you make dinner time a little easier with their new kids eat free program. Get a free chicken or tofu mini bowl with any entree purchased weekdays after four and all weekend. Sedano and Cap will be on uh, with us in about an hour. All right, two o'clock call of the day next. And uh, you guys might be surprised to learn someone we know wants to go coach at an HBCU. And I'm if I'm running an HBCU, I hire this guy yesterday. I'll tell you who it is coming up. Mason in Ireland, 2 o'clock call of the day. You can call in with any questions you have or anything we've talked about. 877-710-ESPN. 877-710-3776. Gang's all here. Mason in Ireland, ESPN LA. This week.
ESPN 710, Los Angeles Sports. And it is the biggest show on the radio. Mason and Ireland is on for your Tuesday afternoon. If you want me to, I will be the B. Here we go. Lakers are back on the court tonight as Mason's spring break continues. Lakers, Warriors, three games left in the final week of the season. And yes, today's Tuesday. Usually a live imaging Tuesday. But of course, Ireland's comments on Friday. But as, as, as you've moment. noticed with me, I, I normally always acquiesce. You didn't want to take calls. I said, okay. You don't want guests. I said, okay. Right. Uh, no. I didn't want Morales on the show. Still don't. So you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, fold, you fold faster to Greg than Mason. Does to you. Yeah, Mason right. does fold fast to you. <laughs> now, ownership likes me, but if Johnny I turned on me, I thought we had a friendship. I thought we made peace many summers ago at the TRB in Manhattan Beach. Tin Roof Bistro, by the way. Did Ireland keep me off the air today? Dot, dot, dot. Let's get to it. A Tuesday afternoon celebrating their 20th year at ESPN Los Angeles, the biggest show on the radio. I am sticking up for John, my friend, my partner. He should be the A. Mason and Otto on your Tuesday afternoon right now. With me now. All right, uh, one hour down, one more to go. It's a combo play today. By the way, Bergman, where do we stand on whether or not you, you want me to be the A or the B? I've decided. It's finally come down to it. It's my decision. You are not going to be the A tomorrow. <laughs> Momo is going to be the A tomorrow. Does, We're she, do does she know this? Well, she just tweeted about it. Nice. She just tweeted a what hour. She, what she, she tweet? Tw- she tweeted an hourglass emoji and at L- LA Ireland. So she's calling you out. All right. She's going to be what, the A. Here's my prediction. I think you are going to never appreciate me more than once this show <laughs> starts tomorrow. So I'm not doing anything. I'm just no. showing up and reacting. If you want to send your email, you're welcome I'm to. I'm not. Okay. No email. Okay. I, then I got it. Me and Momo, we All right. got this. So that's Momo the to? A. Tomorrow, Wednesday. Am I out too? No, you're here. No, 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 I mean, no. Wait, I did you want Laura to send an email? Oh, no, yeah, you can send an email. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, this, this is just Ireland. <laughs> so that'll be tomorrow. This is Greg's mission he's been on yeah, lately. He says, right. I'm not a good A, and he that's wants some right. other people to be the A. We'll do, Momo's going to do great. We'll do that tomorrow. All right, let's get some calls in here. Uh, Frankie in the LBC. You're on ESPN LA. Hey, Frankie. Let me see. Is he there? Frankie, you there? What it do, baby? It's your boy, Frankie D. Fresh. And I need a big favor from Mr. John Ireland. What do you need, man? Now, first first off, I'm very disappointed in that gutless rat Morales for not being here on a live imaging Tuesday. Right. Because I got one of them fancy custom-made uh, CMM shirts, but mine says SDR with my initials. The problem <laughs> is I got a little stain on it, and the dry cleaners didn't even have any, been able to get it out. And I know you're the master with laundry. All right. I have ba- so Frankie, asking- I, have, I have bad news for you. Uh, I failed miserably in my last laundry assignment, and it was it had to do with a pair of pants that Laura bought, <laughs> and she wore them. Well, I think you wore them one time, right? One time, yeah. And she got popcorn oil on the pants, Frankie. So uh, I took the pants, and I wrecked Laura's pants. Uh- I couldn't get the oil out. Mm. So I'm retired from doing it, but I will tell you this. Go to Amazon and look up something called Matzenbachers. Matzenbachers? Yeah, Matzenbachers. Okay. Starts in the MOS. It's got whatever your. St- Do you know what the stain is, Frankie? Um, it was some sort of sauce, and then I used like a black cocktail napkin, and that black t- cocktail mat- napkin made it work. All right. That's, yeah, that's throw some Matzenbachers on there and see if that does the trick. I wish I could be more helpful, but once I wrecked Laura's pants, I retired. I bought her a new pair of pants because I felt so bad about he it. He did. Yeah. And then, uh, Laura, I threw out the ones I wrecked. So uh, Smart. I'm retired. Throw it in the gutter. Go buy another. Uh, right. All right. So um, a couple of things. First of all, um, I have one other football thing that I wanted to do while, yeah. while DeMarco's here. This, to me, sounds incredibly weird. Um, so I love LaDainian Tomlinson. You guys remember LT. He oh, used to come on with Mason. Yeah. He used to come on with Mason and I once a week when he was playing. We, we, we had a contract with him, and so he'd come on. We got to know him really well. So he was on a podcast this week, and he says, these are his words, not mine. He says he's convinced his offensive coordinator with the Chargers, a guy named Cam Cameron, threw a playoff game on Ooh. purpose because he wanted to be the head coach of the Dolphins, and the Dolphins were interviewing for head coaches, and he wasn't going to be allowed to interview until the Chargers were eliminated. Oh. And he thinks, LT thinks, 
Cam Cameron threw a game on purpose. Here's exactly what LT said. So in my mind, did we just throw the game for a head coaching job? Ooh. Did so, we just? So you, so you say get, let's finish now. If we lose now, I get to go take my interviews. I get to go take a job. You play football a certain way if you're up by 11 mm -hmm. or if you're up in the second half. Freddie T, what we doing? Tote that thing. We toting that it. thing. <laughs> yep. How do I not get the ball? Lorenzo said, uh, Lonil said, that if you'd have got it more in the second half, y'all win the game. And that's why I said we have all had a chance to think about this stuff, process it, and the fact that, you know, someone gets it right after we lose. Guys, I appreciate everything. You know, you guys play hard for me. I'm going to take this Miami job. What? All right. So what he's accusing him of, Cam Cameron of, Michael, is that Chargers had an 11-point lead at halftime, and they stopped running the ball. According to Ladanian, they stopped running the ball, stopped giving the ball to him. They kept passing. They kept stopping the clock. They let – was it the Patriots or the Jets, DeMarco? Patriots. They let the Patriots back in the game, and the Patriots came back to win. If this were true, it would be a huge story. No way it's true, right? No, no, I don't think I don't think anybody throws a game like that. Any coach or player at that level. No way. Not Pepe, what do you think? It happened in college, uh, but not, not I in the don't pros. think so because there is a lot of people involved, you know. Not really. I mean, he's the one calling the plays. Yeah, but I mean the, the players are the ones that play. Right, know? but he's calling the plays and um all the players are doing is that. Well, Demarco, you're the one guy the that problem. played in the game. Greg, do you do you buy this? Do you buy what LT is selling? Not especially. Yeah, I, Demarco, what I, does just, that mean? I just, I <laughs> just, what, what does that mean? I just can't <laughs> imagine that that something on the scale of an NFL playoff game could be fixed. What do you think? No, see, I I told this. I didn't tell this to Michael. Um, I cannot have conversations with the elder men in my family because when they bring up Marshawn Lynch, I have to leave. Because they think mm -hmm. Pete Carroll decided to throw the game because he didn't want Marshawn to be the MVP. And I'm like, that is the dumbest thing yeah. I've ever heard. Yeah, uh, A head coach is not going to give up a championship just right. for personal bias. Right. So same totally. applies here. And I don't know. And I love LT. I do. LaDainian, I thought, was outside of Marshall, the best running back I've ever seen with these two eyes. Fantastic. Uh, worked out with him in the offseason. Everything they say about him is true. So I don't know what he's doing. And... Sometimes you get on these podcasts and it's bad groupthink. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you just start talking and you run off at the mouth. So I don't understand. And I'm looking at the game, the, the game book, and it seems like every first possession of the second half, Ladanian Tomlinson left tackle. That's one drive. They went three and out. The next drive, Ladanian started the drive with a rush attempt. Michael Turner scored a rushing touchdown in the second half. So he, you think he could be misremembering this? I mean, look, as we get farther away from our games, and maybe you didn't process it then and you're trying to process it now and you're trying to come up with answers, and this is what you get. And on podcasts, it lives forever. So maybe this is what he thinks now. Next week, he'll come back to reality. It just does not match up with how this game went because Cam Cameron cannot script – a muffed punt by the Chargers that gave right. the ball back to right. Tom Brady. I'm with you. I don't think it could that's, possibly that's, be true. All right, let me yeah, sneak this totally in there before. We're going to do correct. What's Up Fool next because we're, we're going to combo play today. But, Michael, I, I put this in for you and Pepe. Um, you guys remember when Deion Sanders went to take the Jackson State head coaching job? He wanted to go to a historically black college and university in HBCU um, because those guys don't get a lot of good coaches, and he wanted to do something – to help those kids. TMZ tracked down Byron Scott. Now, Byron Scott, keep in mind, is a former NBA coach of the year. He took the New Jersey Nets back before they moved to Brooklyn to two finals. When he won coach of the year, he was a coach in New Orleans. Then he came to coach the Lakers. He's coached three NBA teams. Somebody asked Byron, are, are you – do you want to go back to the NBA? And he, he doesn't necessarily want to go back to the NBA, but listen to what he wants to do. You know, I got that bug watching the last uh, couple of years of uh, March Madness and just, you know, the passion and the love I have for this game. I know I could definitely uh, help a university or, or uh, um, uh, HBCU, uh, you know, in the right direction and mentor some of these young kids and young men. Uh, and it's just something that I love to do. I love teaching. I love mentorship. 
Uh, I love the game of basketball, and I know I still have a lot to give. So, yeah, college is something that I've been thinking about for the last few years, and I would love to have that opportunity. Michael, if you're out there and you're running a college, particularly an HBCU, mm-hmm. and you hear that, don't you call Byron Scott that day? Yeah, Kentucky should call him. They got a they right got away, mm-hmm. yeah, right away. Definitely, man. Byron Scott, a multiple-time NBA champion, a uh, guy who played under Pat Coach Riley. Coach Jason Kidd, Coach exactly. Chris Paul. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Byron should definitely coaching somewhere, especially in college. Definitely. Peppy, isn't this a, like the biggest no-brainer ever? He'll be, be, he'll be better than, than Calipari. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he can get he can get eliminated in the first round four years in a row. Hey, by the way, since you brought it up, if you're Danny Hurley, I think Danny Hurley made four million dollars mm-hmm. last year, and Kentucky calls you and offers you ten. Ten. Do you go? Oh yeah, he has to. He says he wants to stay at Connecticut and build a dynasty there. But Kentucky has the money, and they should definitely be calling him and offering ten a five year fifty million dollar deal. Why isn't Byron Scott coaching now? Well, in the NBA. Just because what the NBA has done now is gone kind of like baseball, gone to younger, less expensive coaches. But oh. Byron doesn't sound like he's looking for money. He no. sounds like like I, he's got all the money he needs. That yeah. would be the only question is, like, why are you available? By the way, by yeah. the way, oh, and Michael back, Michael, back me up on this. Byron's one of the great guys of all time. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, if, if I had a son and – I, he was thinking about going to play, and you told me Byron Scott was the coach. Mm-hmm. That would tilt the scale a oh, no lot doubt. for me. If money was no issue for Byron Scott, whatever schools, I don't know what they pay at HBCU schools yeah, for probably, basketball. Probably I don't five, think he's probably I, five, four, 400, 500. Okay, but Michael, it, it, I don't think yeah. Byron's looking for a payout. If here. he's willing yeah. to take it, it and come coach, it sounds Absolutely. like to me he and the, wants to and coach the most kids. And the most important thing that he said is he wants to teach these guys how to play the game, mm-hmm. which some of the guys that get to the NBA still don't know how to play the game. That's true. Yeah. Well, as bro- Michael points out, at least once a game, these guys just abandon everything and go one-on-one at yeah. least five, ten times a game. And I say it all the time. When I'm not going to say names, but some of the players that get the ball and then they try to bring the ball up, I said, oh, no. Yeah, please. why is that guy bringing it up? Yeah, just, good point. Wow. All right, uh, we'll do What's Up Fool next. We'll get Laura in here. We'll get Brian Cohen in here. We'll get Bergman in here. They're going to throw a bunch of questions at us, and they're going to do it next. But first, let me tell you about one of my favorite partners that we have at ESPN LA. You've been hearing about the incredible TV deals from Isaac and Roy at Mirror Audio Video for years. So if you ever thought, you know, why not? Get myself a new TV. Today is that day. We have for you, right here, right now, the lowest price ever on the incredible brand new Sony 85-inch 4K Ultra HD LED Smart Google TV. It's the X77L series, and it's going to look spectacular in your house. This is a Sony Right now, you can grab the Sony 85 for a Mason in Ireland, friends and family price that's so good. It's available for the first three listeners who call, get through, and buy right now. After the three go, the deal is over and you missed it. Lowest price anywhere is 1500 bucks. Right now, we go lower. Your price, 1249 250 bucks off right now. 1249 bucks, and the 85 inch is yours. Want one? Got a call right now. 310-234-4010. 3102344010 I just saved you 250 bucks from our friends at Mir Audio Video in Westwood. Mason and Ireland, what's up fool? Coming next. ESPN LA.
Jason in Ireland, more at 1 p.m. And yes, it's around 2.45 in the Southland. You know what we do each weekday at 2.45. What's up, fool? And we've been very excited that What's Up, fool? is made possible by our friends at Dos Hombres. In fact, we've got a special guest voice. Take it away, guest voice. What's Up, fool? is brought to you by Dos Hombres Mezcal. It's fate. It's friendship. It's Mezcal. Dos Hombres. Look at that. How do I follow that? I don't. So I simply say, take it away, Corporate Greg. Thanks, Morales. All right, so a, a site put out the ranking of their of the last 10 NBA champions. I'm not going to go one through a 10 because it's too difficult to get it all across, but I'm going to give you a couple of the highlights and see if you agree with it. It's the 2017 Warriors were the best NBA championship champions in the last 10 years. That's 20. what I said. I said that to me that's okay. the greatest team I've ever seen. Okay, fair. They have uh, the Raptors at number five, 2019 Raptors at number five. Do you agree with them being that high? No, I, w- no. I don't, and here's no. why. If you remember that series, Greg, both Clay Thompson and Kevin Durant went down with yep. season ending injuries. Yeah. Yep. Michael, I think if Clay and Durant don't get hurt, Warriors win again. I was there for that series. If those two weren't, if it, Durant wasn't injured, and Clay obviously got hurt later, but if Durant wasn't injured, they would have swept the, the Raptors. Yeah, Greg, I might put them at 10. All right, so what do you think the 2020 Lakers were, 1 through 10? Probably towards the back. Probably 8, 9, or 10, not which, just because it was in the bubble, not in right? The t- talking about the last 20 years? No, the last 10. 10, oh, 10. 10 years. Last 10 years. 2013 um, to now. Oh, 20, so they have 2014 to, to now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this starts with the first Spurs, Spurs and then the yeah. Warriors start winning. Winning, right yep um that bubble team well here's what i think about the bubble lakers i think they would have won the title if there was no bubble they were rolling people anyway mm-hmm. um and so where they, do you think they are ranked uh, I'll, I'll, I'll prime LeBron, because it's maybe. bubble i'll say nine everybody agree with that yeah yeah, yeah. ten yeah. Ten. not so okay. bad yeah. okay but they also have the nuggets the 2023 nuggets were which were a great team swept everybody uh or mostly we're number seven Seven. Wow. Seven. That seems. No, well, here's, right? here's why they're selling both of those teams short. Neither one of those teams in the entire playoffs even got taken to seven games. You know, they they hmm. took care of everybody in Doesn't four, or five, or six. Yeah. Right. I was not saying they got them ranked too low. Yeah. So what Who's team two? is number eight? Who's, Who's number two? Who's number one? Number, okay. So oh, it's Warriors. Tw- it, it goes. Yeah. Warriors, so this is the one. order, just real fast. 2017 Warriors, 2018 Warriors, 2014 Spurs. 2016 Cavs, 2019 Raptors, 2015 Warriors, 2023 Nuggets, 2021 Bucks, 2022 Warriors, and 2020 Lakers. So I would the put the 20. The the two, <laughs> no, I would put the 22 Warriors 10th. Ah. Mm-hmm. I'd move up the Lakers and the Nuggets, but I agree with the 2017 and 18 Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. That team. Nobody's going to beat that. That's team. with Durant, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and they, they were. were they yeah, were unbeatable. They, I mean. They, yeah, they you, you couldn't double team right. anybody. There's, yeah. there's nothing you can do. No, right. Nothing. They were. They I mean they just did dominated LeBron. Yeah. Dominated. What's up, fool? All right, guys. I saw something. Uh, some news out of the Chargers locker room now with Jim Harbaugh making some locker room changes, changing the, uh, you know, the stalls next to each other to nu- numerically. But the thing that caught my attention here was everybody's nameplate now is going to show their high school recruitment level. Ooh, I like it. See, I thought it was kind of an interesting thing. It's like these guys are all pros. We've already all made the NFL. Why do we have to have, you know, so a one to star, two star, three right, star, to a five star Jamarco, recruit what were you? Oh, coming out of high school? Uh, I think I was a four star. Um, yeah, my brother was five. And did your brother play in the NFL? No, okay. UCLA. Uh, Terry Donahue was as far as he got here. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't he make the NFL? He liked business. Well, he yeah, to be a business yeah, man. yeah, yeah. He 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 liked to play, mm-hmm. but he didn't love to play. Yeah. He loved business. Yeah. So, the yeah. Marco, do you agree with the, what? I think doing? it's hilarious. I love what Harbaugh's done. You don't think it's that's fu- no, that's I great stuff. Star. It's competition. All right, that's what you bet. want to create here's in the locker room. Here's a bet I have with yeah. Mike Trudell. Tell me which side of this bet you yeah. would want. I think the Chargers are going to win at least ten games. I think they're going to go ten and seven with Harbaugh. Trudell says no way, so we have a bet. Uh, I wouldn't say no way. Do they? Do you have them beating the Chiefs once, at least once? Because they always seem to play them tough. No, but I have them beat. Even if they lose twice to the Chiefs, I have them winning all their other division games. I think it's I have possible. Them beating the Raiders twice. I have them beating the That's Broncos twice. Guaranteed. Yeah. Um, you know it, Greg. Stop. Stop shaking your head. Come on. You know it. Yes. The I, I, I think the Raiders ten twice? wins. Is entirely possible for the Chargers. At least Chargers, nine or no. nine or ten, and yeah. they're they're working well, now. New Greg, coach. You, you yeah. would you would take Trudell's side of that bet? What was it? Is nine? I have ten or more. He has nine or less. I would take Trudell's side. 
they're not going to beat the Raiders twice. They never do. It doesn't matter if one's good and the other one's or well, bad. They, they, doesn't matter. This might Remember be a new this, era. Well, uh, DeMarco, this year was the year that the Raiders beat him so bad that Brandon Staley almost got fired at halftime. Well, yep. y- yeah. <laughs> Should have. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You're in the division. They always, think, always, always split. I think that issue has been resolved now. Yeah. Um, Harbaugh in his first year, nah. Nine, I actually, nine Brian, don't mind that thing with it because it goes to show you that it doesn't really matter what you're rated in high school. Like, Austin Reeves is undrafted. Yeah. And he's the third best player on the Lakers, depending on which D'Angelo Russell and, shows oh, yeah. up. And Nasir Reed. Nasir Yeah, Nasir Reed. Dead bod. Great, great example. Uh, What's up, foo? Oh, that's me. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> um, so I love being a passenger in the car, and this kind of sparked conversation in the back. I always joke that one of my favorite perks of having a boyfriend is encouraging him to drive us around. But over the weekend, he wanted to revoke my what I call passenger princess privileges because I kept telling him how to drive. I was like, be careful, don't get too close, you know, just assisting. And I wanted to know, was I wrong in assisting while I was a passenger? Yes. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah, you went full. You did yes. a full yes. Lisa Ireland. She what? does the same yes. thing. And yes. I, uh, I'm surprised Christian doesn't look at you and say, "You want to drive?" He has. He uh, did this Sunday, and I was were, like, "No, this is why you're in the driving chair." If you were driving in the passenger seat with the Rock, you know what he would tell you? What? Shut up. Know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's right. My he, nickname is Captain Michael, Shoulder. Michael, if you and yeah. Julie go somewhere together, do you always drive? Oh yeah, I always drive. Yeah, me, like too. To drive. me too. Me yeah. too. Me too. But I, two. You, you get two. To slow down. You I, get two critiques, and then I pull over, does, and you does drive. Liz yeah. backseat driver with you, Pepe? She drives all the time. She you you're, you're you're drive? The passenger. No, because I, precisely because of that, you know. Yeah, you don't want to hear it. Not yeah. at all. So okay. you want to be chauffeured, huh, Pepe? No, yeah. because right. hey, I'm, if you be go chauffeured. right, they yeah. tell you to go left. If you get so close, no. they tell you, you to go left. Being a passenger is the greatest thing on the planet. <laughs> Does she pay for the meals, too, when you go out? <laughs> Does she open the door for you, Pepe? Michael. 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 Stone Cold. Michael. Stone, Cold. Oh, Stone Cold Thompson. No, no dear, you drive. <laughs> Man up, Pepe. Ombre up. Ombre up. Oh, my God. How many fights have you started? with this stupid questions that don't have anything to do with what we're talking about. What man lets this woman drive him around? When I oh, I, if Lisa well, I drive around, around, I would when, do it. When you gave me a ride, yeah. did well, I say anything? It was, it was, hey, was Michael, would it, be, would it be rude if Lisa says, hey, I'll drive? Would it be rude if I got in the back seat? <laughs> no, you should. No, that's, that's funny. Teach her a lesson. Heck yeah. That's, yeah. Teach Mrs. her a lesson. Mrs. Daisy yeah. driving. Yeah. I didn't no, no. She would, I didn't she would, she anything would say, when get in the front or get out. So, right. I, I didn't would. tell you yeah. anything when you were driving, and you were driving so slow that I could see the ant it was in the f- road. Dang. It was 5 o'clock on the 405. What do you want me to do? No, 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 no. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. You were driving from the back seat. I was in the front seat. It's like my legs are low. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Demarco, did you hear my wife on the show when uh, for Valentine's Day, Mason? I heard about it. I didn't hear it. Yeah. Okay. So Mason wrote a love letter from me to my wife on Chat GPT. I, I heard this. Yeah. And so, uh, my here was my wife's reaction when I told her. Fuck us. No, that was, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. You monster. <laughs> Yeah, she called me a monster because wow. I used Chat GPT. Actually, Mason used Chat GPT. All right, uh, Greg, is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay, wow. uh, coming up next, every team now has multiple trainers and nutritionists and, you know, uh, chefs and meal plans. Uh, there's one former athlete that says none of that stuff is any good and it's all useless. We'll, we'll tell you who it is next, but first, let me tell you about ZipRecruiter. Um, it can now take up to 11 weeks on average to hire for an open job. You don't have that kind of time. If you're listening today, I've got some advice. Stop waiting. Start using ZipRecruiter. Right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash LA. ZipRecruiter uses powerful matching technology to quickly find and send you the most qualified people for your roles. Uh, Or as my buddy Ian Siegel, the inventor of ZipRecruiter, says, we don't leave anything to chance. They quickly help you get qualified candidates. How fast? Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within one day. So just go to that exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash LA. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash LA. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Mason in Ireland, ESPN LA.
Hey, I'm Dave Denholm. And I'm Mario Rees. You know us from the LAFC radio broadcast. Ah! Now we have a new podcast called LAFC Plus, and you can find it on the ESPN LA app. LAFC Plus brings you all the latest on the black and gold. Plus, we break down the latest news and interesting stories from around MLS. For all the news, fun, insight, and everything that is MLS and LAFC, join us on LAFC Plus. LAFC! It's available on the ESPN LA app and everywhere you get your podcast. Join us. Big news, Laker fans. John Ireland here. You can now stream every Lakers game on the ESPN LA app. Don't miss a second of the action with Michael Thompson and I on the call. Plus, all your live and local Lakers talk every day in the palm of your hand. You're one tap away from everything Lakers. You can even win Lakers tickets. Download the ESPN LA app. And bam. bam. Download the ESPN LA app at the App Store and Google Play. On 710 ESPN, the OGs of LA Sports Radio. We're here each weekday, 1 to 4 p.m. for your afternoon. Sandwiched between Travis and Sliwa and Sonato and Cap. Mason and Ireland continues now. Uh, Mason and Ireland, we're loaded today. DeMarco Far filling in for Mace. Michael's here. Pepe's here. Uh, gang's all here. Laura, Greg, Brian, everybody. Um, all right, so. We have Pepe with us today, two former professional athletes. Pepe was one, too. He played soccer. And so, <laughs> what? He did. <laughs> yeah. Tommy, you were a great athlete in Mexico. Um, I play a lot of sports. My best my best was basketball. Really? Basketball. Nice. Wow. All right. In okay. Brian. Oh, there it is. I got it. We okay. play with no baskets. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, Peach basket. You guys remember Ozzy Guillen? He played shortstop in the, in the major league. Then he was the yeah. manager of the White Sox. Yeah. Led him to the from Venezuela. Venezuela. So yeah. much fun. So now he is a TV analyst for the White Sox. He used to be their manager. He used to be the manager of the Marlins. Um, he says the common way of thinking of more sports nutritionists. You know, the, we always hear Michael and I always hear because we travel with trainers and masseuses and nutritionists and people. They say you are what you eat, or you can't. You, DeMarco, you've heard this. Can't out-train a bad diet. Yes, can't yeah. out-train your fork. Um, Gian says he played and managed with guys who ate whatever they want. So did I. And they played great, and mm -hmm. they never got hurt. So did I. Here is Ozzy Gian and his theory on nutrition. Running the bases. Running the bases. Everything is about legs. I don't know... Yeah. Uh, uh, like I always say, uh, uh, John Crook say, fat, never pull. You can't pull fat. Nope. Mm -hmm. 
todos, eat right, be careful what you eat, no eat cheeseburger, here's the print, nah, 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 man. I remember those guys go here drinking two, six, seven, twelve Budweiser, give me three hamburger and go get it, boys. Didn't they, go on the injured list. And they play all year long. All right, Michael. <laughs> and here's the proof. Here's the proof that Ozzy is right. Look at this picture. Describe what you. describe what you're seeing. I, I don't see any body fat whatsoever. And that is a man. Right. Who, that's a man who ate cheeseburger so, and pizza every day. Wow. I'm, I'm, you know why I got that way? Because I was training. I, I'm particularly interested in in the two of you, Demarco and Michael. Is nutrition something or nothing for a professional athlete? I think it's something. It's something, but it's you something. can overcome it by yeah. training. Which I just showed you this picture. You see, all so see my picture. you don't believe in the phrase "you can't out train a bad diet." No, no, I don't believe in that because I had a bad diet when I, when I, when you see this picture when I was 32, 33 years of age. But I was ripped because I was working out. And every you were day. working hard. Yeah. So you you overcame your yeah, kind of I bad diet. Off. Yeah. I burned yeah. it off. You're burning eighteen thousand calories a day. Yep. You can eat what you want. Exactly. Yeah. But mm-hmm. at some point, when you get older, nutrition well, becomes a factor. Yeah. But well, I've then, heard Crux say that fat yeah. doesn't pull. He's right. <laughs> But Remember you're not very fast big, either. <laughs> big, big papi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was big. He was, yeah. But he was a DH. Well, he didn't he mentioned, run. <laughs> he mentioned John yeah. Cruck. I covered John Cruck when yeah. he played, and Cruck did whatever he wanted, yeah. ate whatever he wanted. He, he, he Cruck would Philly, argue right? with me. He said baseball players are not athletes. Like we talk about athletes, he goes baseball players are not athletes. Yes, they are. That's but to his, yes, like you can't him. pull right. fat, yeah. right? So yeah, yeah I, I I see where he's coming from, but. Certain guys can overdo it to where it hurts you. Yeah, right. you don't want to overdo it, but you can, as long as you train hard, you can eat what you want. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah, Cheeseburgers, mm. pizza, I French eat what fries. I want now, but you know, yeah. I don't eat a lot. I know some of the best athletes on the planet, and all they do is eat McDonald's. Yeah. Morning, uh, noon, and night. And That's all they do. They're ripped. Well, and they're ripped. Ever, you ever see the movie Super Size Me, Bergman? Yeah. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, it's crazy. So it's a guy that ate McDonald's every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. And all of his health numbers went way off the chart bad. Yeah, of course. That could happen. Yeah. But he yeah. wasn't exercising. Correct. Yeah, these guys are like, you know, you receivers. It off. Yeah. Horrible diets. All right. right. Um, last thing before we get to Game of Games, it's Michael's game. We have six players for Game of mm, Games oh today, boy. including Jacob and Ronnie, who just is, uh, walked in the door. Um, all right, so we talked about Danny Hurley. If Kentucky offers you $10 million, would you take it? And we all think he should. Yeah. Um, if you were Kentucky, let's look at this from the other side. Who would you rather have as your next head coach? Here's a list. Danny Hurley. Yep. Nate Oates, the coach at Alabama who just took him to the Final Four. Good mm-hmm. young guy. Jay Wright, who led Villanova yeah. to two titles good. and retired young. Yeah, good coach. Billy Donovan. The coach of the Chicago Bulls. One, was, two in college at Florida. Right. Or, Michael, I'll throw this out there just for fun, Don Staley. Don would Staley you, would work, yeah. Yeah, all right. So who, if you're, if assume anyone would say yes. I think. And you're Kentucky. Do you, is it I think, Hurley? I think. Please say Don Staley. I think Staley would probably take it for us, right? Because <laughs> that's a great challenge for her. They'd probably yeah. offer her three times the money she's making in South Carolina. She's being paid like $3 million a year. But I think it could work. She knows basketball. Just because she's a woman doesn't mean she can't coach guys. So I think they should offer her her first. If she doesn't want it, go to Dan Hurley. Pepe, isn't it? I I brought this up yesterday on the show. Isn't it kind of a pipe dream to think they would hire Don Staley? There has never been a woman to, and I think I I wish they would. I think it'd be great for the sport. But there's never been a woman who's been the coach of a major D1 program, let alone a blue blood like Kentucky. Could it work, Pepe? Probably not happening, right? Well, it can work, but uh, it's not going to be easy for Why not? her. Why? Because uh, I mean, she's going to be it's coaching Kentucky boys. It's Kentucky, <laughs> right. yeah. you know. It's they basketball. expect to win it's, every game. It's basketball, Pepe. <laughs> yeah, okay. She played yeah. at the highest level. I, yeah. I, what do you think, the coach? coach? Think a woman could a woman? Oh, I would have said Billy Donovan. Isn't it the last back-to-back coach, right? Yeah. Since, yeah. And, yeah. and I mean, the Bulls actually are having a decent season. I mean, they, that's that's the easiest sell. Let me ask you this, Demarco, because yeah. I thought about this. The guy who coaches, um, what's the guy who coaches the Dolphins? Dolphins, um, Mike McDaniel, and also uh, Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, never played in the NFL. Didn't even come close. Could a yes, woman? But be coordinators. Head, but coordinators. Yeah, but could a woman be a head coach in the NFL? Obviously, women will never play in the NFL. I don't think there's any women position coaches yet. They're all assistants. Will there ever be one? Uh, probably yeah. not. Why not? I, I just don't think so. I you mean, don't think they understand the game enough. My, uh, so it would have to be the right woman. Yeah, like, Kyle yeah. Didn't I play. don't think so. I don't think. That maybe I mean if flag football and girls flag football is exploding at some point yes maybe mm-hmm. at a skill position but in the interior or a running back I mean an how? offensive How's coordinator make calling plays an offensive defensive coordinator who's going to give you that job 
You don't, so you don't deal with it. There's no women out there who know the game that deep. Okay, that the, well, Michael, did you see that the, the coach of the year yeah. in the G League, mm-hmm. Lindsey Harding, she coached the Stockton Kings, Sacramento's G League team, to the best record in the league this year, is being interviewed for the Charlotte right. Hornets job. There's nothing wrong with that. I was just going to yeah. say, like, the first female offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator, the yeah. one you want, is probably coaching now, and it would take her 10 years to get there. Wow, 10 more years. You can't jump the line. That's right, mm, Michael. There are some other coaches yeah, that are waiting. It, yeah, I think it'll be easier in basketball than in, in football. football. Do you guys think it'll happen in our lifetime that there'll be a female head coach of an NBA team or head coach of an NFL team, or will we all be long gone when that happens? Long gone, especially in the NFL. NFL, yeah. 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 Head guess, coach? Yeah. I can see it happening in the NBA someday. Somebody well, I mean, um, Staley. what's her name who coaches the Las Vegas Aces? Yeah, Becky, Becky Hammond. Becky Hammond. She, was she won the G League title with the Spurs, and then she goes into the WNBA and wins back-to-back titles. So yeah. she knows what she's doing. And, and you know... How is Hall told me once he thinks she could do it. Oh, she yeah. Can be an oh, NBA yeah. Head she coach. can do it. She's really good. And yeah. you know the funny thing is she never played for the U.S. She never played for U.S. Really? Team USA. Wow. Yeah, she had, a, she had a situation in college where she got her college coach fired, and I think the other coaches held it against her. You know uh, uh, where she played? At, in college? No, oh, in the Olympics. She, she played for another country? Russia. Really? No way. Wow. wow. Check it out. Wow. Okay, Check maybe that's out. why she never put the email. <laughs> All right, coming up next, Jacob Imrani is here, as he often is on Tuesdays. Now, I got uh, t- Greg did uh, the Eclipse yesterday. I've got yes. an Eclipse game. Should I do my Eclipse or should I do Warriors Lakers? Do you have a Warriors Lakers yeah, game? As a backup. Yeah, Warriors, yeah. yeah, do that. Warriors Lakers. Okay. With the, it's the biggest game of the year. Um, all right, so Jacob will get in here. We'll do Game of Games next. Mason and Ireland, ESPN LA. And did you know it's Masters Week? Uh, and listen all week long to the Travis and Sliwa show to qualify to win the ultimate go- golf and spa luxury experience at Pacific Palms Resort, LA's hilltop hideaway and number one work and play resort. And just for qualifying, you get a $50 gift card to the lavish red restaurant at Pacific Palms. Celebrate Masters Week all week long on the Travis and Sleepa Show with Pacific Palms Resort and 710 ESPN. This.
ESPN. And it is time for Game of Games on the number one sports radio show in L.A., Mason and Ireland. Game, Game of, of Games. Games. Game of Games presented by CallJacob.com. Call Jacob. Everyone loves a fighter, but in this town, winning matters, especially after an accident. So remember, anyone can fight, but CallJacob.com is here for you when you need a big win. After an accident, go to CallJacob.com or call 844-24-JACOB. That's 844-24-JACOB. We got the jingle. Call Jacob. Thank you. Game of games time. Take it away, Mace. All right, no Mace today, but we are fully covered. Six players for Game of Games. Brian Cohen, Greg Bergman, Laura Romo, DeMarco Farr, Jacob and Ronnie, and me. And it is Michael Thompson hosting today's Game of Games on a day we all feel is the biggest Laker game of the year. Michael, what do you got? Warriors play the Lakers tonight. The game is Laker, Warrior, both or neither. I'll say the player. You all tell me if you if they played for the Lakers, Warriors, both or neither. You all right, know so what? four you know possible what? choices. Four you, choices. You know what you are, Mike? What? You are the hero of a town with no people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Nassau. John uh, has a very big advantage of here because he does this game a lot. All right, here we uh, go. Yeah, but I haven't done it for these two teams. So you so all let's have see. to guess. Played we'll for both teams or neither. Okay. Yeah. All right, both? here we go. No. Yeah, four. John's One. winning this game. Lakers, Warriors, both or neither. Okay. That's the choices. When I say the name, you'll all have to guess All it. right, go ahead. Wilt. Uh, Brian. Uh, both. Uh, Greg. Lakers. Laura. Lakers. DeMarco. Both. Uh, I will say both. Jacob. Oh, oh, dang, both. Honestly. Okay. <laughs> Michael. Wait, wait. What oh, Pepe. Mean? I'm sorry, Pepe. Okay. Both. Both is the word. He played for the Warriors and yeah. Lakers, guys. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, here John we go. Should end. Oops. Okay, wait a minute, yes. wait a minute, wait a minute. So, okay, I'll go last in this one. So, Jacob got it. Pepe got it. I got it. DeMarco got it, right? Brian got it. Brian got it. So, we have seven players. All right, here we go. Doug Christie. Uh, this is you, Greg. Lakers both, Warriors or neither? Lakers. Laura. I'm going both. DeMarco. Lakers. Jacob. Lakers. Pepe. Lakers. I'm also going to say Lakers. Lakers. It is just Lakers. Yes. Okay. okay. So, who? anybody not get me, that? Me. Laura, Laura did. Everybody else got it. Okay. Laura's, Laura's uh, scoreless. Uh, everybody else has two except Greg. He has one. Jamal Wilkes. Uh, this one is you, Laura. Uh-huh. Oh. Jamal oh. Wilkes. Both. You're going both. Uh, DeMarco. Both. Uh, Jacob. I think he played for both. Both. Uh, Pepe. Pepe. Both. Brian. Warriors. Greg. Both. I'm going both. It is both. Okay. Yeah. Cornbread, right? Yep. Yeah. No, okay. no, Jamal Wilkes. Jamal Wilkes. Yeah. Okay. Phil Chenier. Phil Chenier. <laughs> Wow, this one's hard. DeMarco. Uh, neither. Jacob. Warriors. Pepe. Warriors. Brian. I'm going to go neither. Greg. Neither. Laura. I'm going with DeMarco and Pepe. Warriors. I'm going neither. I said neither. Yeah. Oh, JK. I'm yeah. going All right, what's it the answer, Mike? Neither. Yeah, neither. I've okay. never heard of this. So, so who, you made it up. All right, Washington so who else bullets. got that besides me? I got it. Okay. Brian got it. And DeMarco. And DeMarco. And DeMarco got it. Okay. Uh, so uh, right now, DeMarco and I have four. Brian and Greg have three. Jacob has three. Pepe has three. Laura has one. Nick Young. Ooh, that's uh, tough. That is tough. Jacob. I believe Nick Young played for both. Pepe. Both. Brian. Both. Greg. Both. Laura. With the crowd vote. DeMarco. Lakers. I'm yeah. going both. It is both. Ah. Yeah, so everybody what but DeMarco. What did he DeMarco. play for the Warriors? Uh, but they Georgia won a championship. And... Oh, that's right. Duh. Pat Riley. Hmm. Playing or coached? Played. Played. Pat Riley. Uh, this one is Pepe. Lakers. Brian. Uh, Lakers. Greg. Lakers. Laura. Laker, yeah, just Lakers. DeMarco. Lakers. I'm also saying just Lakers. It is just Lakers. Okay, so everybody get that? Yep, everybody got it. Okay. Nick Van Exel. Hmm. Uh, This one is Brian. I'm going to go both. Greg. Like a year, maybe. I'll go both. Laura. Both. DeMarco. Both. I'm going to go Lakers. Jacob. Lakers. Pepe. 
Lakers. It is both. Ah, oh, caught up. Okay. Caught up. So here's what we go. Oh, Lord's got four. When now. did he play for the? When, oh, he played for the. Uh, Jamar, did you get season. that? Yeah, I okay. did. Okay, so now we, this is really close. Uh, Brian six, Greg six, Demarco six, John six, Jacob five, Pepe five, Laura four. Here we go. Steve Blake. Uh, this one's you, Greg. Both. Uh, Laura. I am gonna go Warriors. Uh, Demarco. <sighs> Lakers. Uh, Jacob. Both. Pepe. Both. Brian. Uh, Lakers. I'm going to go both. It, it is, is both. both. Oh, okay. So now, uh, Craig, you both. and I, you went both that time, right? I went both, yeah. All right, you and I have seven. Jacob has six. DeMarco has six. Brian has six. Pepe has six. <laughs> and Laura has four. Here we go. Billy left? Billy Thompson. Okay, this is a former teammate of Michael's. Um, Jacob. Lakers. Pepe. Warriors. Brian. I'll go Lakers. Greg. I don't think he played for the Lakers. Uh, let's go Warriors. Laura. Uh, nobody said both. I'll go with that. I'm already losing. DeMarco. Uh, I'll go with you both. <laughs> I'm just going to go Lakers. It is both. Oh! oh! All right, so Boom! DeMarco hey. got wow. it. Who else got it? Laura, Me. you got, I it. got it. Anybody else? <laughs> Nope. No. All right, so that means there's a three-way tie for first. Greg, DeMarco, and John all have seven. Michael, you got three more? Oh, yeah, a bunch more. Okay, do three more. Samaki Walker. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a hard one. Uh -huh. So we have to, one of us have John. Oh, John, you go last, I thought. But no. Yeah, uh, Greg, you go. Samaki Walker. Samaki Walker definitely played for one of them. Uh, I will go Lakers only. DeMarco. Lakers. I'm also going to go Lakers. Jacob. Lakers. Pepe. Lakers. Brian. Both. This could be big for you. Laura. I know he played for the Lakers, but I'm also going to go with Brian and say both. Mike, what's the answer? Lakers only. Hey. hey. All right. So Greg, hey. DeMarco, and John all, right, all have eight. Out. Jacob has seven. Pepe has seven. Laura, <laughs> you're surprise. out. Um, Brian, did you get that? No. Okay. I missed that one. All right. So. Two left. Brian, you need to need this one to stay alive. Here we go. Jim Jackson. Jim Jackson. God, he played for frickin' so everybody. So many teams. Um, okay, so who has eight? DeMarco. Both. <sighs> Greg. Both. I'm also going to go both. Jacob. It is both, I think. Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> Pepe. Well, I have to say both. Brian, you got to go I'm different. I'm going to steal a point here with neither. It is both. Yeah. Okay. He definitely played for the Lakers. Yeah. yeah. yeah All right. So know. this is the last yeah. one. Jacob, you have eight. Pepe, you have eight. <laughs> And then Greg, DeMarco, and John all have nine. So you, Pepe, and Jacob get to go last. Make it really hard. Okay? <laughs> 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 Only for them, not for us. All right. Well, all right. Jerome Kersey. Oh, man. Jerome Kersey. All right, DeMarco. Wow. Neither. Greg. <sighs> Lakers. I'm also going to go Lakers. Good job. Jacob. I'm going to go I'm going to go both. I have to go both. Yeah. All right, so Pepe and then say both. What's the answer? Both. Oh, oh no way! Joe, oh, I didn't think he played for the worst. I know he played for the Lakers. That's he what definitely I'm played about. for the Lakers. Okay. Yes. That's right. Get it. Wow. Greg nine, DeMarco nine, John nine, Jacob nine, <laughs> Pepe nine. Oh, we let's need a pen. Go. All right, tiebreaker. Is there time. a tiebreaker, Michael? Yeah. Just, we gotta, okay, let's so, do the tiebreaker. All right. all right, everybody got something to write on? Yep, yep. Uh, no. DeMarco? Oh. Yeah, hold on. Here, right. Jacob, Jacob, I'll just you can okay. just give it to me. That's fine. Okay. Hey, Jacob's got there. Jacob, okay. this. Go ahead. Thank you. The Warriors and Lakers have played 437 times. How many wins for the Lakers? 437 times. Okay. How many wins for the Lakers in the 437 games? Okay. So Brian, you're out, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm out. I got one. Uh, okay. Greg, how many wins for the Lakers? Right, What'd every, you write down? Everybody's written something down. Yeah, yes. let, me, let me write, let me write wait, something wait, wait, down. Wait, wait, I don't wait, want wait, you to go off of my, my answer. That's true, yeah. Good call. Good call. Uh, 
DeMarco, you, you okay. hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, I wrote, yeah, yeah. I wrote down yeah. a number. What are you writing? Come DeMarco? on, DeMarco, you wrote yeah, yeah, yeah. an essay, man. Write it down. It was a three-digit number. Googling it. <laughs> oh my God! I can't your phone. You can't Google. I'm writing this down. Okay, go ahead. Right. Okay, go ahead. Everybody DeMarco, wrote down a number. Num- what's your number, DeMarco, that you wrote down? I got two eighteen. Okay, Greg, what number did you write down? Three o two. Um, I wrote down two fifty one. Pepe, what'd you write down? Two six eight. And Jacob. 333. Ooh, All between, right. between me and you, Jacob. The answer, Michael? 262. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh Pepe oh, wins. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, without going go over, over or just close? Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's close. Pepe, Pepe was six away, but he went over. Okay. I'm 11 away, so right. Pepe wins. Pepe wins. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Pepe. Yeah. Hey, yeah. nice job. Boy, I come from hard behind. Fought. Wow. Game wow. again. Wow. This is a good <laughs> one. By the way, John, that means now we have now have seven different people with one. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Tied at the top. Wow. Woo. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Can't believe Pepe won one of my games. Uh, <laughs> all right, so Jacob, what do you think tonight? One of my games. Oh, I feel good. Dude, I'm nervous. I feel good. I, I look at the Warriors, Michael. Tell me if you agree. I look at the Warriors as our equal. I think that we, it's like looking in a mirror. They could win or we could win. I don't have a feel either way. What the do you barometer, think? I keep telling you guys, if Clay shoots lights out, the Lakers could be in trouble. Oh, we got to have a conversation with Clay before the game, then. Well, I, did you hear my idea earlier? <laughs> let's get Draymond thrown out. That's right. That? Wow. But let's think about it. We have a lot more to play for than the Warriors, no? No. no. Whoever loses tonight, yeah. I think, becomes the 10. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we know the 10 teams that are in the postseason, that they're all locked. But if the Warriors win tonight, they would be a half game behind the Lakers with one more game to play, and they'd have the tiebreaker. If the Lakers, no, he's right now. If the Lakers win... They are guaranteed at least the nine. And potentially, and potentially depending on what happens the between the other guys. So they're both playing. It's a playoff game. I love it. That's why we're going. Pepe. Before we go any farther, I want to clarify about the Becky Hammond. I made a mistake. You oh, Becky Popery lies. lies. Yeah. Yeah. You lies. That's what your whole game is about. <laughs> well, let, let me tell you about the Lakers tonight. If the Lakers play with the name and the front of the jersey. Well, do they always do that? The Lakers will win. All right. I have one word that I want the Lakers to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. Focus. <laughs> Focus. 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 Let's hope they don't do that tonight, James. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll get Sedano and Kevin here. Great to see you, Jacob. Good to see you guys. See you tonight at the game. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to look at the suite. Yeah. Yes. No one waved at Pepe the last game. We will. Nice. Everybody in my suite is going to be waving at Pepe. Pepe. Just look. You know I'm right. No one waved at you. So tonight. He waved back. I am gonna, and people waved back. I'm going to have my phone ready to take a picture of the Jacob suite. That's right. You know what's going to happen? You guys are all going to be out getting food, and no one's going to be in there. You all know right. what? Bring your solar Hit the eclipse. super <laughs> stage. ESPN AM 710 Los Angeles. KRDC AM 1110 Pasadena Los Angeles. K256 CX 99.1 FM Pasadena Los Angeles. It's the greatest segment in LA sports radio history. Radio history. Oh my god. When the shows come together for magic on the radio. It will only grow stronger. Super Cross Talk. Are we ready for Sedano and Cap to join Mason in Ireland? Super Cross Talk begins! Super Cross Talk, presented by Coors Light. Coors Light, made to chill. It's time for Super Cross Talk. All right, whoa, 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 whoa. time for Super Cross Talk. Focus! <laughs> Focus from Scott Kaplan on his megaphone. Sedano and Cap are Focus. along. Focus. <laughs> Focus. I didn't know that's what he was saying. Yeah. Wow. When he first said it, <laughs> oh my here, get in here, do? Cappy. Uh, when he first said it, DeMarco, Michael and I were convinced he was telling somebody to F off. That's what I'm saying. Dump it. Dump yeah. it. Focus. Trust me. Focus. I felt that. Focus. <laughs> He's saying, for people who don't know, he's saying focus. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Took me four times. Uh, what George do do? and Sedano's joining us. Uh, George, are you still in Florida? I'm in Bristol today. Oh, well, Bristol. unlucky you. Well, maybe if you get home before the Double Tree, you can get a TV dinner at the Double Tree. If you get <laughs> oh home. no! Let me tell you something, John. The culinary experience has changed here. Why? How so? There's a sushi place down hey, the road. Hey, okay. There you go. But There's how late a- do they stay open? Uh, I think ten thirty. When are you free of all duties? Eight thirty local time. Because you guys have a you guys are uh, Michael and Slee were on the air at five thirty. All right, so you can go. Oh, and the game's on TNT tonight, so you can watch it from Bristol. Correct. Oh, um, so 
I uh, they have that. They have a Longhorn Steakhouse. There's Cava, which is the old school Italian place mm. that's always been wow. there. Right. On, there's, the ca- on the campus? No, just outside. These, but oh. Bristol had no restaurants as recently as like three. Cappy, have you ever been to Bristol? Never been. George and I have spent more nights there than we'd like to remember. But if they've got more culinary options. Yes. DeMarco, have you ever been there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there aren't many. There was one hotel and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now there's a bunch of hotels. Are you at the Double Tree or somewhere else? I'm at the Double Tree, but there's a bunch of new hotels. What too. room are you in? <laughs> I'm not you, bro. Yeah, Cappy, yeah, Cappy puts you, it out. My there. phone is already off the hook because right, I know wow. you're going to try to call me. Are you in 408 again? <laughs> Yeah, 408. Call 408? That okay, yeah. right, 408. Not across the hall at 409. I was at a concert once, and the, uh, Pat Moynihan, the guy from uh, Monahan, the guy from Train, yeah. said, he goes, I'm taken, but see that? And he pointed at the lead guitar player. He said, room 721 at the Ritz-Carlton. Check him out. <laughs> and I'm convinced that was exactly that dude's room. I, I wonder if any girls showed up over there. Um, By the way, happy anniversary. Today, five years ago, in about... Three hours, Magic Johnson resigned. No way. Wow. Three hours that from now, it was five was years ago. So I was on the real. air. I'll never forget it. Pepe, did you walk into the hallway that day? Yeah. I did, too. And it was, somebody walked into the press room where we all eat and said, Magic is in the hallway resigning. And I went, no way. And I got up and walked over there. And uh, is his mic on, Brian? Um, the, uh, the... I, I was stunned. What the hell, man? By it. Is his stunned. mic on or not? Say something, it's Pepe. Yes. No, no, I don't no. hear Pepe. I don't think it's on. Yeah. Focus, check, Brian. Check, check, focus. Check, focus. Check, yeah. focus. Yeah. Focus. Yeah. focus. Brian, Tap focus. it hard, man. Focus. There you go. All right, can we hear him now? Pepe. Pepe. Brian. Pepe. Brian. Brian. There, is. There, there we go. go. There, there we go. go. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Brian Cohen. Do better, dude. Um, George, that was the most surreal. Because Jeannie didn't even know. Nobody knew. Yeah. And he was afraid to tell Jeannie because... He told us later she would try. She would have tried to talk me out of it, and I didn't want her to talk. I didn't want to. A, I didn't want to disappoint her, and B, I didn't want her to talk me out of it. So I just didn't tell her. What was his ultimate motivation? Like, did he say this is the thing that made the decision for me, and I made the decision? Here's what I think happened, but it's just my opinion. Okay. He thought Magic thought that he was in charge of all basketball decisions, everything. And there were certain things that they told him he could not do. Like? Fire both the coach and the GM. He wanted to bring in all new people. Jeannie and Linda really liked Rob. Uh, At the time, Luke was the coach. They eventually did part ways with Luke. But I I think that that the front office, meaning Jeannie and, and the people in the ownership suite, really felt that there was just too much turnover. They kept firing coaches and GMs, and they, they, they wanted stability. And they told Magic, look, we, we just can't fi- keep firing people. We need some stability. And Magic said, well, then I'm out. And he left. That's my take on yeah. it. Uh, Michael, George, you agree with that? I, yeah, that sounds right. I think um, to be a GM or a vice president, whatever, that's a life. That's a you got to be a lifer. Mm-hmm. And Magic's an eclectic man. He's got a lot of different interests. Yeah, you know, so he didn't have the. I don't think he really had the time to put in the jobs because he wanted to go out and do his own thing. He still a lot. held on to his Dodger stuff. He still yeah. went to Italy every right. uh, year for a yeah. month. And so he wasn't know? built. He wasn't built to be that guy who's going to be in the in the dungeon all day long like some coaches and GMs like to be. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, Sedona, do you agree with us that tonight's the biggest Laker game of the year? Yes, 100%. Um, for the reasons you already outlined, this is in essence a playoff game. They lose this, they lose the tiebreaker, and the Warriors still have one more game to play. Um, yeah, they and have the U- four left, and we have three. Well, one more game than the Lakers is what I was going to say. Right. So, they, and because they have that Jazz game, they have to make up. So, yeah. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know what George is talking about, the Warriors had an assistant coach uh, tragically pass away. And it, it knocked the team for a loop. Michael, they missed three games, right? Something like that. Insult, Two or three yeah, games. In Salt Lake City, the day of the game. And so uh, they have one more game that we don't. I think it's as simple as this, guys. I think the loser tonight is the 10. And you don't want to be the 10. No. No. I mean, you don't really want to be the 9 either, but 9's better than 10. And for the Warriors, they really feel, Michael, you know this, they feel like they can make a run. They mm-hmm. feel like they've turn something on they found one six of seven they found something in april the lakers won nine of eleven the warriors have won six of seven they both feel like if they get in they can do some damage but they got to get in and from the 10 sedano it's really hard to get in well they're both in and, and not only that uh, i think that if uh, anthony davis play and lebron play the lakers will win this game as easy as you're that. saying if 
Are if they going well, to play? Yeah, they're going to play. They're both going to play. Come on, they both got to play. I mean, they're Anthony Davis. Yeah, but do you know that for a fact? I do not. However, here's what I do know. Stop yelling at you. I know. Why are you yelling at me? It's because I'm in front of you. Right. You know? You don't ever get in between Pepe and Michael. You're going to catch trays. Tell me if you think this is a good idea or not, Pepe. I suggest that Anthony Davis wear a helmet tonight. Well, not a helmet. Just, you can't wear a just helmet. Goggles. What do you mean? No, no, no goggles. A full-on helmet. You cannot hey, listen, wear a helmet. Like a basketball. Rams helmet. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> with, with, the, with, the, with the LT visor. You guys were talking about LaDainian Tomlinson yeah. earlier? With the LT visor. This way, nobody can poke him in the eye. Happy, nobody happy. can forearm in the head. You know, Copy. yes, Copy. Copy. Stay, stay away from Mike because that was very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but 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 Pepe, on the other hand, I'm trying to figure out a way to make sure Anthony Davis A plays and B, I don't want him to get hurt in La Cabeza. What yeah. we do? Yeah. By the way, Sedano, can you make a player wear goggles or do you have to no. just approach him and say, look, we'd really strongly encourage him to wear Yeah, I goggles. think you can strongly encourage. It's kind of like the mask, right? Like guys yeah. who break their nose, they tr some guys try it and then they can't deal with it and they just take it off. Hey, hey, hey Sedano, we were talking about Don Staley a little bit ago. Yeah. Do you think Kentucky should make a legitimate run at her? Do you think that could work at the men's level? I mean, have you been around her? I think it would work. She's she's definitely someone that I think can make it work for sure. Mm, yeah. Um, she's an incredible coach. Let me I mean, you were on this a long time ago, Michael, but the women's game for many years now has become a better game in yeah. a lot of ways. Right. And totally. The, totally. The, the the talent level is incredible. Mm -hmm. They build stars in a way that the men's game doesn't. Yeah. And they're the lady stay for three, four years. Correct. And the coaches um, I have become Ill, Ill, there's a, a number of elite level coaches in women's college basketball as many maybe as the men's now mm -hmm. and, and I think that the next Caitlin Clark is in our backyard in Juju Watkins because well, she's going to be around for two more years I'm glad you went there because Michael is there a rule that says Juju can't go to the WNBA? Yeah, she's got to be there for three, three years. years. Stupid. Really? Three years? Three years. You yes. can't be a one and done? But Why not? to Sedano's point that has helped grow the game Yeah that's true for college um, now, So uh, I, I did this. And her brand. They don't yeah. have a G League for the women? No, they I do did not. this off oh. the air, but I want to throw it at you guys on the air. Somebody, this is not my idea. I, I heard it on a podcast. I wish I could remember. By the way, two very good podcasts you mentioned today. Clay talking to Draymond, which Fantastic. I thought you talk about diplomatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You talk about a, a, a great answer and a diplomatic answer. Anybody who missed it, uh, Draymond says to Clay, you know, tell me how you really feel when I get kicked out of games. And Clay says, dude, you're the heart and soul of our team. When you're off the floor, that, that really hurts us. That was yeah. a great answer. Fantastic. Yeah. And then the whole LaDainian Tomlinson thing of accusing his offensive coordinator, ah. Cam Cameron. I think you were of, in San Diego when uh, yeah, that happened. Now, was that the game? Was that against the New England Patriots? Yeah, uh, when they were up 11 in the, the, at halftime. You know what? Pick. But you know, Well, what happened is yeah. a guy named Marlon McCree actually intercepted a pass of Tom Brady, and he tried to make a play like trying to run it back. He fumbled the ball, and the Patriots recovered the ball. So, you, you I don't know, think that's Cam Cameron. That's not, yeah, that's not the offensive <laughs> yeah. coordinator throwing By the, the way, game. that would be a much, much bigger story if it had actually happened. So I don't think right. it happened. But here's the question for you guys. Somebody said the NCAA should go to Caitlin Clark and say, hey, I know you've declared for the draft, but the draft hasn't happened yet. We will give you $10 million if you play one more year at Iowa. Sedano, isn't that a good deal for both sides? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think so because I don't think that, she, what is she going to prove in college? You know what I'm saying? I guess she Nothing, still can win she's a championship. She's a ratings juggernaut and I, I it would get it, grow, but she, continue to grow the game. Um, she will, she will, look, the ratings will dip next year because she's, they need to replace her and Paige Becker's is only got one more year. But I think Juju is the person they're going to build. Let me, let me just tell you something based on a very short amount of time I've been in Bristol today. They are Con they continue to be the pioneers of women's sports, and they are absolutely in on helping Juju become the next Caitlin Clark and story tell about her. Does she, because I'll be honest, I mean, I only saw minimal highlights as the year went on at USC. What is it? What She's made, incredible. But what made Caitlin Clark so interesting for most people is the long range right. Steph Curry yeah, esque kind of shooting. Juju, Juju will get there. Yeah, Juju doesn't need that. She can shake. She can any get defender. to the rim yeah. anytime she wants. And Cappy, yeah. she had fifty points, fifty two points in against a women's Stanford. game. Yeah, yeah. against yeah. a good team. How tall is she? Yeah, six, anybody know? Six feet. Six feet tall. Six tall. So six, Jorge, she's a guard. Jorge, yeah. Jorge uh, I think that the people like the women's the way of playing basketball because they're playing the way 
it used to be, you know. Mm -hmm. They're moving the ball. They're, they're moving setting the picks. Ball, they're getting to the basket. Yeah. They're not shooting Correct. threes I mean, like Sedano, crazy. How many times have you been in an NBA game? Michael brings this up all the time, and where they just don't run any plays. They no. just no. give it to somebody, and they go one on one, and that's yeah. the possession. Right. Or they, yeah, they go like you know, they spread the floor, right, and then they, it's just one on one, mm -hmm. and you you drive and kick, or you try to get to the rim, right, that's or you it. pull up from three. Yeah. Um, all right, Sonato and Cap coming up next. They'll lead you up to 5.30 and then the pregame show. Wait, where are you guys going? We're uh, going question. across the street. Good <laughs> question. We're going across the street for the big game. Are, are you going to the East Central? No, I'm going to Crypto. I mean, listen, oh. Michael, what yeah. happens if, uh, I, 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 you know, yeah. if what? it's Lakers-Warriors again, Yeah. okay, for the play-in, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like you can't lose in that scenario. Is that well, a fair? We also can't this? win. Yeah, what happens is bad for the NBA because what somebody, a couple of superstars or some Hall of Famers, four Hall of Famers are going to get knocked out by the Warriors or the Lakers are going to lose, the, the NBA is going to lose two superstars from the Lakers. To so your point, yeah, George, the we need the Kings would to love, keep losing. Yeah. The, the NBA would love to get the, the Lakers into the seven and the Warriors into right. the eight and get them both yep. into a first-round exactly. playoff series. That, yeah. that would be the home run. Well, All right. The All Pelicans right. are – Zion's a little dinged up again. He's got a b busted finger, so who knows? Ooh, resist. Uh, resist, Michael. All right, Cappy, what do you got? <laughs> hey, so you say you're going across the street. You're going to the game right now? Yes, sir. You're not going to be sitting in the office over here? No, for okay. a little while, yeah. Okay, all right, because I, <laughs> I wanted to just see if, the, if when you said across the street, I thought you were going to go to the East Central. That's my spot. You know, that's my home away from home. Home away from home. Yes, I will be. You're going to wave to Pepe? You're darn right I'm going to wave oh, to he's Pepe. going to come go. and say hi of because course he I do. always comes and say hi. Right, because it's respect. Say hi. That's respect right. that that's you respect. don't have. Right, you don't have that. You know what, you know what Cappy you has, don't, Michael? You don't, don't, don't even know the meaning of respect. You don't know the meaning of respect. You don't know the meaning of respect. Here's what Cappy has that you don't have. Focus. That's right. That's right. Focus. 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 Yeah. Uh, so, hey, the East Central, if you want, John, I'm offering you my room. At the East Central, if you want to do any of the game preparation work oh, over at the East go. Central. Unlike Mace, I would take you up on that offer to go to your room, but I am so jacked up for this game. I've been as excited about this game as I've been about any game all year. I can't wait to get across the street. Understood. So I'll, I'll do a rain check. Understood. Well, if you get done with the game tonight mm -hmm. and you're tired and you don't want to drive home and you want to come crash <laughs> you can with crash me, with might, you, know, might happen. you could crash with me in my room <laughs> at the East Central. Wow. Okay? Hey, I want to tell everybody I mean, right listen, now. Michael's got a really long drive, actually. Michael, you, know? you can also stay with me. You yeah. can take your shoes off when you come in. Right? I'll have towels on the floor Cappy, for you. Cappy, did you bow to Michael? Uh, you know what? I haven't yet, but let me give you a decent bow. You, take, you know, know, Michael, last night. Why are we night? bowing to Michael? Oh, we forgot. No, Michael, no, I that's forgot a, that's a half you think bow. Of the no, that's not a half bow. Yeah. That's like a full it? bow. No, that's, that's a, a full bow. bow. No. Watch, I'm going to give you a full bow, too. That's a full bow. That's a full yeah. bow. Yeah. That's a full yeah. bow, Pepe. Michael, was it a good a bow, bow by Cappy? Michael, that's a pretty good bow, I think. No, it's yeah. a blank yeah. bow. Yeah. The, Deep it's bow. a what bow? The, the guy it's a blank the bow. No, not, not a blank bow. Thomas Brown. Not yeah. a blank bow. <laughs> well, when I walk in... Not a, he is not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when I walk into the East Central tonight after the game, I'm going to bow to everybody there as well. Okay? Beautiful. I want to say to everybody who's listening right now, if you're coming to downtown, you're going to a game, you're going to a museum, you're going to a show... You're going to a night out on the town. The Circle of Trust stays at the East Central, and I encourage you to book your room at eastcentralhotel.com. Sedano and Cap coming up next. Marco, thank you, man. That you was fun. Man. Fun. Uh, all right, Sedano and Cap coming next. I'll lead you right up to Lakers pregame. ESPN.